Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter 9a study guide. The first thing you're going to notice is that I have written my perfect squares um, down the side of this sheet of paper. I would do that on your study guide. That just makes it a little bit easier when you're looking for these perfect square factors. And I would create that list as soon as you get your test. I would write that at the top. Um, it's easy to create that list with your uh, calculator and I would maybe go up to about 100. I feel like that will be sufficient for the study guide and for the test. If we need to add on to this list, we absolutely can. I'm going to go through the simplifying radicals ra rather quickly just because there's a video. Um, I think it's the first video of chapter 9 going into detail about finding those the biggest perfect square factors. So if you need that video, go back and watch that one. But I am going to color code it for you. Um, I do want to give fair warning. Um, I have had a cough. I keep trying to re-record this video and I keep coughing. So if I cough in your ear, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to push through because I know that y'all need these videos for next week. Um, rem keep in mind that there are sliders, there are chapters at the bottom of this. So if you need to go to a certain question, you can just hover over it and it will go to the question that you need. Okay. So we're going to get started. Of course, I'm going to color code it up like usual. Root eight. Root eight is not a perfect square. It's not on my list, but I can rewrite it as the square root of four times the square root of two. That is still the square root of eight. It's just written in a way that I can take out the square root of four. I can simplify that. That becomes two holes and that is two root two. So root 8 simplifies to 2 root 2. What is a perfect square that goes into the square root of 28? That is going to be, the biggest one is going to be root 4 times root 7. What is the square root of 4? Square root of 4 is going to give me two holes. So this becomes 2 root 7. Okay. All right. Root 45 on number 3. Root 45 becomes root 9 times root 5. Root 9, of course, is perfect. That's 3. And then root 5 remains under the radical. I know that that is um, fully simplified because I took out the biggest perfect square factor. Now, 252 is a little bit harder. 252 has a perfect square. You could go through the list. Obviously, whenever I type in 252 divided by 100, I'm going to get a decimal. So you just keep going up the list. Try 81, then try 64. The first one that's going to uh, give you a um, whole number is uh, root 36. So I'm going to write that as root 36. I think it's 36 times 7 gives me 252. So what is the square root of 36? The square root of 36 is 6, and that is going to be 6 root 7. Okay, 147. 147 is divisible by 49. How many times does it go into it? Three times. So that's root 49 root 3. Root 49 root 3 becomes 7 root 3. 7 root 3. Okay. Root 18 is going to be root 9 times root 2. Y'all can see we were pretty nice on these problems. We tried to keep them small for you. Uh, 3 root 2, so that you're not having to spend um, the entire test trying to find a, a perfect square factor. It should go pretty quick. So the first 6 is just taking a, a radical and simplifying it. What are we doing on 7 through 18? We're doing radical operations. So that was our second lesson in chapter 9. So if you need a refresher, go watch that. But number 7, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be multiplying. And when we're multiplying and dividing radicals, you multiply the coefficients with the coefficients and the radicands with the radicands, which is just a super fancy way to say multiply the stuff on the outside with the stuff on the outside and multiply the stuff on the inside with the stuff on the inside. So let's do that. Um, these are both, the 15 and 5 are both the um, numbers on the inside of that radical. So I'm going to rewrite that as 15 times 5. What is 15 times 5? That is going to be equal to root 75. I would be done if that contains no perfect squares, but we know that it does. Think about money. Root 25 times, that's uh, 3. 75 cents is 3 quarters. And so then I can simplify that square to 25. This becomes just like the first six problems to 5 root 3. So after you do the radical operations at the very end, we're going to simplify it. All right, what about this next one? Let's color code it. I've got root 8 and root 6, and then my coefficients are negative 4 times 2. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to multiply the stuff outside of the radical with the stuff outside the radical, and we're going to multiply the stuff inside the radical with the stuff inside the radical. So that becomes negative 8, and that is 6 times 8 is 48. I would be done if the square root of 48 contains no perfect squares, but it does. Now, many of you are going to want to take out a 4 because we are so good at our times tables that we are like, ooh, divisible by 4. But you want to make sure you take out the biggest perfect square factor. So let me pause here. F root 48 falls right above root 49. Let me zoom in a little bit. Right above root 49. 
And so we know it's gonna be six point something, really, really, really close to seven. So you can pause and type that in if you want to. So I'm gonna be going up this list. The first perfect square that is going to go into 48 is actually 16, that's the biggest one. So make sure that you're using that list when you can. It will be very, very helpful because root 48 is actually divisible by 16. It's gonna be 16, root 16, root three. Root square root of 16 is going to be equal to 4, so that's negative 8 times 4, root 3. And then I can multiply the negative 8 times 4, that's negative 32, root 3. Negative 32, root 3. So the actual operation was not bad on this problem, there's just lots of simplifying to do. All right, let's keep going. Let's see. Okay, so let's color code it. This will be 4, and then that will be 6 times 15. 6 times 15 is 90, um, so that becomes 4 root 90. Y'all, I have not had to use my calculator a ton yet, thankfully, because it is currently dead, so I'm gonna have to use my phone calculator if I need one. Um, so the numbers are pretty small here, so that's gonna be uh, root 90. We know that root 9 times root 10 is root 90. What is the square root of 9 since it is perfect? It is 3, so that's gonna be 4 times 3 root 10. What is 4 times 3? 4 times 3 is going to give me 12, and so we have our final answer would be 12 root 10. 12 root 10. All right, let's keep going. So we have root 15 times root 8. So we're going to wait and simplify until the very end. I know that root 8 can be simplified, but wait and simplify it at the very, very end. So as far as highlighting goes, let's color code it. Those are both under the radical symbol. So this is going to become root 15 times 8 which is equal to root, ooh, let's see, I think that's 120. Yes, okay, 120. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break that down. And so the very uh, the perfect square that goes into that is going to be four. So that's gonna be four times 30. That's root four, root 30. Root four is two, that's a perfect square. And what is left under the radical symbol, root 30. Two root 30. Let me double check that really quick. Let's, and here, here's how I'm double checking that. I'm typing in the square root of 120 and seeing what it is as, as a decimal. And I'm making sure that um, two root 30 is that same decimal, as well as I'm checking that 15 times eight. Okay, all right. So number 11 is the very first division problem you see. And number 11 is deceptively easy. <laughs> so number 11, we look at it and we're like, oh no, there's a radical in the denominator. And that means that it's not fully simplified. But if you look at what kind of radical it is, always check to see if it's a perfect square, which this one is. So there, there are going to be some of you who try to do too much work on this problem. That is the square root of 36. Well, what is the square root of 36? It is a perfect square. So you do 30 divided by six. Well, what is 30 divided by six? Five, boom, you're done. There are some of you who probably worked that problem and went around the world to do it. You'd multiplied by root 36 on the top and bottom. You got some big numbers going on Then you had to simplify. And at the end of the day, you're still going to get five. You're just going to do way more work than you need to. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. So this one does have a radical in the denominator. The person that is the issue that I'm looking at right now is this root three. We cannot leave that root three in the denominator if it's going to be a fully simplified radical. So what we're gonna do is we're going to rationalize the denominator and we're gonna do that by multiplying by root three over root three. Because that's just like multiplying, that is just, it's multiplying by one, but it's rewriting it so that the radical is going to um, no longer be in the denominator. So what does that become? Let's look at what happens. That is going to be the square root of 36 over two root nine two root nine. Actually, actually I'm gonna do that in blue because that's what we did earlier. Let's, let's stay with the colors. Two root nine. Well, root nine is a perfect square as well as root 36 actually. So what is the square root of 36? Six. What is the square root of nine? Three. What's still hanging out in the bottom as well? The two. And then what is two times three? Two times three is going to give me six. So this becomes six over six, which of course is just equal to one. So way more simple. One is way more simple than root 12 over two root three. Okay, so let's keep going. There's a few more like that. This is the thing that most people struggled with the most. So um, I'm gonna do quite a few of these with y'all. That's why we put these on here. Four over root seven. Again, who is the issue? The issue here is that root seven in the denominator. We cannot have that radical left in the denominator. So we're gonna rationalize it by multiplying it by itself. Why do we do that? Because then it becomes root 49 
Square root of 49 is perfect, so let's change that to blue. That's the square root of 49. What is the square root of 49? Seven. But if you do that in the bottom, you have to also do that in the top. So this becomes four root seven in the top. Four root seven is just going to stay four root seven. Square root of seven is fully simplified, so that is four root seven over seven. Four sevenths, I do always check that fraction to make sure I can't reduce it. Four sevenths doesn't reduce any more than it already is, so that is fully simplified. All right, we do have a radical in the denominator on this one, and unfortunately, there's a radical in the denominator and in the numerator, but they do not match. So this is a root three, the other one's a root five. So we are gonna have to rationalize it. We're gonna multiply by root three over root three. When I do that, I'm gonna get root 15 over root nine. Why do I love root nine? Because it is perfect. So that's gonna become root 15 over whole number three. That is one third. Um, you can write the one, there's an understood one there, um, but that is root 15 over three, fully simplified. All right, so this very last section is just adding and subtracting like radicals. Remember, adding and subtracting like radicals is just like adding and subtracting like terms. This is like saying um, I have negative $3 and I want to borrow two more. How much do I owe? That is going to be a total of negative 5 root 2. So those are like radicals because those are both root 2, and I'm just going to perform the operation, the coefficients. Negative 3 minus 2 gives me negative 5 root twos, negative five root twos total. And that is my final answer on that problem, negative five root two. So be careful here, people get going fast and they wanna multiply here. They wanna go, oh, what's well, negative three times negative two is positive six, and then two times two is root four. This is not multiplication, this is subtraction. So slow down when you get to these problems. It's adding and subtracting like radicals. So let's do that again. I have some like radicals here. How do I know? Because this one is a root five and this one's a root five. So that's like saying, hey, I have three cows and four cows. How many cows do I have total? Seven cows. But here I'm adding root fives together instead. So that's going to become seven root five. Final answer is going to be seven root five. And then we get to this one. This one's interesting. We have root twos and then we have root 18s. Okay. Unfortunately, root two is not exactly the same as root 18. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify the square root of 18 because there might be a perfect square factor in 18 that I can break this down to and take out some perfect squares. Root two is fully simplified, so we're gonna rewrite this. This is gonna be three times root nine times root two plus three root two. Do you see what just happened? Here's a root two. A root two just popped out right here. So whenever I take the square root, this is a perfect square. Root nine is a perfect square. Square root of nine is three. That's three. So now we're doing three times three root two plus three root two. And now they match. What is three times three? We need to clean that up just a little bit. What is three times three? Three times three is going to give us nine. So I have nine root twos and I want to add to that. I want to add three root twos to that. So nine plus three root two is going to give me a total of 12 root twos. So I have a total of, oh, what did I just write 12, y'all? Let's see, 12 root twos. There's a two, and then there is a 12. So I have 12 root twos total there. So while they did not originally um, seem to match, after I simplified them both, they became like radicals. Let's see if that happens here. Um, it might, it might not. Let's see, three root six. Root six is fully simplified minus three. How can I rewrite the square root of 54? Um, nine goes into 54, I believe, six times. So square root of nine becomes, that's a perfect square, becomes three. But don't forget you're multiplying that times uh, the negative three out front. So that's where root six. Well, look what happened. Boom. This is root six. This is root six. So now they're matching. So that is three root six minus, let's rewrite that. Um, so when I put that together, that's going to be three root six minus nine root six. So how many total root sixes do I have? Negative six root six. So um, I do not have a problem like it on here, but I did want to, I just wanted to throw this out here. If I had a problem that said root two plus root three, we would not be able to um, combine those. We'd have to, it'd be fully simplified. So if we were to simplify the square root of 54 and there was not a root six in it, then we would just would not combine these. So we had many problems like that on our assignments. 
All right, I'm going to stop here and I'll create a new video for the Pythagorean theorem.